So now I'm recording. Thank you, Gail. So the training that we did last Saturday was at the office. I know we had some people from Yuma down. We have a we had a lot of great feedback um, on really training on mindset. And a, a subject that's always been really near and dear to my heart has been work, you know, personal development. It's something that I'm just really passionate about because it's it's been the greatest gift that I've gotten from being an entrepreneur. You know, yeah, making money is, is fun, but who you become is even more fun. You know, the more that you start to grow, the more aware that you get. And, you know, last, last Saturday's training was the influence of actually Isaac Salcido. You know, we had, he's like, bro, we got to start training more on mindset and the subconscious mind because if people, people don't know what they don't know. And until you become more self-aware about why you are where you are and why you are who you are, you're not going to make changes, you know, and uh, Dago brought up something there. He's like, yeah, but you know what? You still have to do it, you know, because in the doing of the business, you're going to shift. You're going to have breakthroughs. You're going to evolve. And that's absolutely true. You know, so I think it's a, it's going to be a combination of both of you guys taking action because if you don't, if you, if you do not move forward in the advancement of your goals and dreams, then you you fail yourself by staying stagnant. And it's in the doing of the business, the discomfort, the awkwardness, the rejection, the like, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing phase that you begin to have great breakthroughs. Um, that's what happened for me, guys. I mean, I remember sitting with high identity type people when I felt like very intimidated by them. Um, and I didn't close business those early on, but I got the experience. And the experience was something that I allowed to use as a catalyst, as a stepping stone to move me more into those places. And I can tell you from, I don't know, Dago will tell you, I know Isaac can tell you now from experiences that once you get a flavor of doing an appointment with a high identity type person and you go out there and on your own, you go out there and you help a family and you make 10, 15, $20,000 plus, you then now know, wow, it's possible. I, this is this is where I'm at. And you reach a new level of thinking and you don't go back. And that's really what we want for all of you here because it's super, super, I, I cannot tell you how abundant and wide open it is right now. And I need you all to be really aware of that in terms of your life and your business. Because otherwise, if you just wait one more week. And, and this is something that really consider because think about the last five days since Monday and really ask yourself, and this is a really, you know, come to Jesus kind of question here is what have you personally done to grow yourself and your business this week? What did you do to challenge the status quo of your comfort zones this week? Or do you find yourself rhythmically falling back into mediocre, you know, patterns of, of, of taking action? And until you challenge that mindset, you're not going to get anywhere else. Until you're willing to be this uncomfortable, you're not going to get anywhere else. Now, I want to give you more tools today on how to do that. But you still have to be willing to do it, you know. And, and I know Linda just said, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm listening to positive affirmations and all that stuff is great. but you must take action. It must be a physical action. You know, you can listen to good books, listen to good content, and there's people that know a lot, but they rarely do what they know. And so you have to do it and along with personal development, reading the books, listening to the audio, get on the phone, test it, right? Fail, fail often, right? Fail forward, fail early. Do all those things quickly so that you can really develop this muscle, right? And that's the difference, guys. I don't think I'm anybody special. I don't think Dago's anybody special. I don't think Isaac's anybody special. These are people that just, they work on themselves and then they said, okay, let's test it. Let's try it. And do they make it over time? No, they fail every day, just like I do. And so will you. And so it just becomes a way that we do it, right? And you start to fall in love with failure because you associate a different meaning now. So with that being said, um, I'm really passionate about this material because it's something that I, I, I do every day, you know, and I like to listen to audio, like, stuff like this every day. And I hope that 
I want to share with you in hopes that you will also learn to study yourself more because the more you do, the more breakthroughs I believe you're going to have. Okay. So I'm going to try to get this done here within 45 minutes. So we'll get you guys out of here and enjoy your Saturdays by, by a little just shortly after 930. So I'm going to go into presentation mode. Um, I, I am going to ask for feedback and please feel free to comment. Right. I don't, I want to hear what you guys think of this stuff um, as, this, as this information that's very near and dear to my heart. Let me see here. <clears throat> so let me just organize myself here. Oops. So what we're going to talk about here is... Um, let me just move this out of the way. These little zoom controls get in the way of me presenting sometimes. There we go. It's five ways to really master your subconscious mind, you know, and we talk a lot about this and, and, and sometimes people I've, I've heard about the subconscious mind and it kind of becomes a cliche thing. And, you know, there's all kinds of material on it now. It's, it's, it's now scientifically proven that everything is in our subconscious mind and, and we're all hardwired in a certain way. We all have programs, some positive, mostly negative. And most people don't know what they don't know. And we all act on autopilot. So you have to really learn, you know, part of this business is learning more about who you are and why you do the things you do. And to me, it's really all about rewiring. And why I'm so passionate about this is because this has had the most dramatic impact on my life psychologically, mentally, emotionally, um, because I am someone that came from a, a way that I used to fake it till I make it. Um, I had a lot of insecurities. We all have insecurities. I still have insecurities, but I've become more aware of them and testing those boundaries. You know, and it's all based on programming. You know, so we just want to constantly share content with you. At least this is my intention to help you break out of these shells of these patterns that you constantly behave in that don't serve you. So these are just five ways to help you do so. And, you know, when we talk about, well, what is your subconscious mind as AKA, it's also known as the habit mind, right? And this is something we talked about last year or last week. And, you know, we, we all have two aspects to our mind. It's not just one. We have a conscious and a subconscious, right? So your conscious mind is right now, right now you listening to me, you guys are all consciously aware. You woke up, you're having coffee, you're listening to my voice with your ears, you're looking at the screen. You're conscious right now, okay? You're, you're analyzing, you're making decisions about your day, you know? And you can only stay conscious for a certain amount of time. Right, whether you're looking at a computer screen, you're creating a presentation, doing a presentation, you're talking to somebody. But when we go into the quiet moments of our day, whether we're just driving to the office, right, we're cleaning the house, we're doing things in our own, and we go back into our own thoughts, we go into what the bottom there is, which is we go into subconscious, which is what I call autopilot. Every one of you every one of us, should I speaking, myself included, we all go into autopilot many, many times throughout the day, right? And I'll prove that to you here in a second. But your subconscious is what we don't see underneath the surface, right? We've all seen this iceberg. Um, it's the, one of the best um, pictures that really depict, you know, when we see the iceberg, we see the small part on top of the surface, but we do not see this big block that's underneath. And what happens there, and this goes through everybody, because I know most of you on this, on this call, and as I've got to have one-on-one -on -one calls with you, all of you have different beliefs, right? We uh, uh, Values. All of you have different emotional states. You know, some of you are triggered easily emotionally when things don't go your way. Some of you have a higher threshold to sustain, you know, pain and deal with emotions. Uh, habits, the things that you do uh, religiously, right? And obviously imagination and intuition, but these things are all subconscious programs. And 
until you alter these subconscious programs, your life doesn't change. I can, we can teach you about how to close IUL sales and we can talk to you till we're blue in the face. And I, I cannot tell you how many times I've seen Douglas trading on closing and from someone that's made tons of money in this industry, millions. But why is it that when we hear these trainings and this is what happens and, and I'll, I'll predict your future for some of you, as soon as this training is over, at 9.30, you go back to your life and you go back to doing the same things that you've always done and you wonder why life is not changing. And you're like, why is that? And that's really what I want to challenge with people because I want people to become more aware of this so that you can make the positive changes in your life. Right? You know, look at this picture right here. Um, we all drive mentally on autopilot. Now. You know, Tesla is the first car to come out now where it's auto driving itself. You know, uh, Elon Musk is saying by 2023, he wants to make, he's making a contract with Uber that Tesla's right. That anyone that owns a Tesla, as soon as they get home, they can just send their car out and it's going to drive itself and go pick and drop people off so they can use their Tesla as a money making machine, even though they're at home because their car is auto driving. It's on autopilot. Um, which is remarkable where we're going technologically. So as we're evolving with all this technology, that means that we are evolving as well mentally and we're becoming aware of these things, you know? And so how many of you throughout your day, you catch yourself, you're like, where was I for the last 20 minutes? Where was I for the last 30 minutes? Shit, where was I for the last hour? You're like, your mind just wanders. And what happens is you go into autopilot and that's your programming. That's your habitual mind. You, you do the things. So check this out. And these are all stats here that I think are staggering. Um, the human mind thinks about 12 to 60,000 thoughts per day. Of course, you're not conscious of that. Can you imagine being conscious of all 60,000 thoughts you thought about today? Or you, you would be just smoked. You'd be so tired. Right. So it's just we cannot process that much, you know, thinking. Right. And so research shows that 98 percent of the thoughts are exactly the same as the day before. Isn't that interesting? So th contemplate that for a second, that it's it's 8 30, 8 45 in the morning, that by this evening at 9 or 10 p.m., when you start to wind down. The 12 to 60,000 thoughts you're going to think today are exactly the same thoughts that you thought about yesterday. And you're like, really? Really? Right? This is how much program we are. And even more significant is that 80% of them are negative in nature. Right? Is because most people we're wired to see what's missing in our life, what we don't have in our life versus what we do have. And I think that's is why if, if you look at the way that we're programmed through social media, you know, right now there's a huge spike in depression through social media because especially with younger people is because as they look at social media, social media is the biggest con artist on the planet because Anybody can paint the picture that their life is great, right? And what I'll tell you guys is like, make sure that your actual life is happy and not just on social media. <laughs> because this is where the problem with depression is because people are getting on social media and they're looking at people making the trips and the traveling and, oh my God, their life is so much better than mine. And if I had what they had, maybe I would be in a better place and happy too. Don't buy into that BS, okay? It's all, a, it's all a sham, right? You know, we live in a world of filters right now. You know, holy cow. And I, I look at people now on social media, and then when I see them in person, I'm like, you look nothing like your social media. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's become something very, very uh, divisive, very dangerous. And I just want you guys to be aware of that, all right? And it's driving more of this negative behavior and negative uh, mindset. And so I want you guys to be aware of that. So holy cow, Carla, what you're telling me is that 90% of the thoughts I'm going to think today are the same as I thought yesterday. And 80% of them are negative. Yes, right? That's, that is actual fact. 
And until we, we, until we start to take control of this thing, the six inches between our ears, our life doesn't really start to change. And I want everybody here's is life to change. So I'm not here to, be, to, to talk about negative bad news and, and things like that. I just want you to be aware of what's going on. So this is why we struggle, right? And this is why there's, there's a lot of challenges. So the, prominent, the most prominent reason is that, that people fail to become masters of the power of their mind. This is, and if you look at this picture here, this is exactly how our mind works, right? I love this picture. You know, so right now, like as you're listening to me, you're, everyone's in full conscious mode, right? You're thinking. You're either accepting or rejecting what I'm sharing with you right now. You're like, mm, I agree with that or no, I don't agree with that. Right. This is your educated mind, your intellectual mind. That is just the that's the top, the, the tip of the iceberg that I showed you in the picture before. Now, your subconscious, once you start processing this information, you go back into habits, you go back into your emotions. Right. You know, I'll share a story about Salcido and Mr. Isaac. Right. And um, as I've got to spend a lot of time with Isaac and him with me. Right. He, I'm sure you can tell you things about me. I remember one time he told me, he's like, man, you know, you're more emotional than I thought. And at first I kind of took a slight offense to it because I didn't see myself that way. Consciously, I'm like, I'm not emotional. I'm a very rational, logical person. What are you talking about? But as I, as I, as he said that, cause he spent a lot of time with me, it made me really like, Oh my God, do do I go into an emotion? You know, I am an, I am an emotional person. I didn't know how much that really affected my life. Right. With Isaac, I'll tell you, you know, Isaac, um, one of his go-to emotions that he's harnessed was the emotion of anger, not in a way that he rages and wants to, you know, you know, get physically, uh, violent with people. But when he goes into the emotion of anger, that's when he focuses. It's his, it was his go-to emotion to get what he wanted out of life. And so he was hardwired subconsciously that when I get angry, I get things done. I, I eliminate distractions. And look at all you. Oh, let me ask you, what is your go-to emotion for you to get what you want in life? Some of us, some of us have the emotion of victimization. We feel sorry for ourselves. And that's the way that we get people to give us attention and love us. Right? You know, some of us have the emotion of, um, of positive gratitude, right? Because we want to appreciate more of the things in life. And those are all things that are wired in your subconscious. And so, again, this is why we struggle. So the most prominent reason that people fail to become masters of the power of their mind and therefore their outer conditions is because they don't understand, they don't understand how their mind works. You don't, you know, and so this is the purpose of this training is I want you to understand how your mind works because until you know, right, it's the same thing with an IUL. We can't teach you how to sell an IUL until you know how it works. We can't teach you how to change your life until you know how your mind works. And you need to know how your mind works so that you can become aware of it. So like, oh, I didn't know that I didn't know that I was doing that to myself. Now I can make the changes. So here are just five ways, right, that you really can make an impact in your mind, right? And this is really good because number one is risk taking. I think this applies to all of us here is when you become an entrepreneur, and I don't think anybody on this call came from this industry, you know, all of us did not come from here. We all started here. And many of you, you've never had a business prior to this. You know, this is your first experience in entrepreneurship and the financial services industry. So you remember when you first did your AMA and, and you had those positive, you know, you, you felt a lot of fear. You were very nervous. You're like, oh, my God, I'm doing this. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Right. But you also were excited. Right. You're like, oh, my gosh, think about the possibilities. What if I do make it? What if I crush it? What if I become a successful entrepreneur? You have all those emotions stirring up in the beginning. And that's a good thing. And this is a way that you start rewiring your, your subconscious mind. Now, what happens more often than not is most people reality begins to set in after a few days, a few weeks. 
and you start re and you start to go back to old patterns, right? So, you know, and I know it because I remember some of you, how excited you were when we recruited you in the business and you did your AMA and you're like, oh my God, I'm so excited. And then what happens after a few days, a few weeks, maybe a few months, you go back to these old patterns because your programming tells you, what are you doing, doing this business? Why would people buy from you? Right? You're not even good with money. People, matter of fact, you owe people money. Your, your, your identity begins to tell you why you're not going to be good at this business. You know? And so my point to tell you is that risk taking is a great way to rewire your mind. So a comfort zone can become a rut. If you stay in a comfort zone, you, you, we call it, you know, you know what a rut is like, man, I'm in a rut when you're kind of in a negative state for long periods of time. And it's now proven that if you stay in a comfort zone, that becomes a rut because what happens when you're in a comfort zone? You're not growing. And if you're not growing, you're what? You're dying, right? You're dying. And so complacency is the great enemy of creativity and future possibilities. And that's the worst place you can be is complacent because you just kind of stay stagnant. And what happens when you stay complacent and stagnant? We, we lose and we don't appreciate the most precious thing that we have, all of us, and that is time, right? And for all of us guys, and myself included, and I know dog, I mean, this is kind of a theme right now of life is what's more important, time or money? It's time because look, you can lose money, but you can get money back, but we do not get back time, right? And the more you let another week go by and you do not take action on your goals, on your dreams, and you becoming the person that you know you're meant to become, you, you, you do not appreciate your most precious resource, which is time. And when you squander it, it's not good. Okay. So this is why taking risk is so important. Right. And you know, the mind, the mind thinks that it knows everything and in a way it does, it knows everything that it knows kind of sounds like a riddle. Right. And it's, it's not important to know, you know, it's not important to know what to do. It's important to do what you know. We all know the mind knows a lot. Every one of you on here, we all know how to get ripped. We all know how to exercise. We all know how to make a phone call. We all know how to talk to another human being, right? But so it's not enough to know what to do. Every one of us know what to do, but why don't you do what you already know? And that's what we're, that's what we're talking about here. You have to take the risk. So if you want a new life, you must, challenge your sub, you must challenge your subconscious mind by making it produce new variables, new answers. And you have to be willing to feel awkward and uncomfortable doing new things. Now, in this business, I can tell you that if you don't feel fear on a daily basis, if you don't feel that anxiety of like when you make a call and you're talking to someone that you feel afraid to talk to, you're not growing. And so I want you guys to be okay with feeling awkward, you know, and I, I cannot tell like a lot of you are trying to go get more out of life by trying to remain the same person that you've always been. And that is universally impossible. You want to go from 30,000 to a hundred thousand. You want to go from a hundred thousand to 250,000 in income. You want to go from 250 to 500, you know, I can tell you right now. Right. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll even share with Dago, like, Dog was probably someone that's probably done better financially than all of us, but he's still growing as well, right? Just like myself. And in order for him to get to another level, he's going to have to get more uncomfortable. He's going to have to get more awkward. And I feel that too in my stage where I'm growing and many of you as well. So don't compare yourself to Dago. Don't compare yourself to me. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. The only person that you can compare yourself is to what you did yesterday. Because in order for you to have these new experiences, just know that you're going to get uncomfortable and you have to accept that. And this is when you start to learn like, oh my gosh, like the fear and the, the pressure and the uncertainty and the awkwardness 
is very much a part of this trade. It's very much a part of you doing the business. So I want to normalize it for you. And so when you call and say, oh my God, I'm struggling. I, I feel like my, my palms are sweaty. I, I have like this, these never ending butterflies in my stomach. Then we're just going to be like, congratulations, man. Welcome to the game. Because if you're not experiencing that, then I can tell you, this is why your income hasn't changed. This is why your body hasn't changed. This is why your awareness hasn't changed. It's because you're trying to go get more thinking that you can stay the same person that you've always been. And that's just not going to happen. Okay. And, you know, so there's a common misconception that taking risks is like detrimental, right? Like, oh, don't do it. Why don't most people don't start businesses? Because the risk. What if I fail? What if I lose everything? What if I go broke? And the truth of the matter is that taking risks is no more risky than playing it safe or remaining status quo. It takes no, there is no difference in you thinking bigger. It takes the same amount of energy to think big than it is to think mediocre. Okay. There, it's, it's, it's no change. So if you're going to think, why not aim for the stars, right? Instead of just trying to survive. Stop thinking like, you know, all I want to do is just pay my bills. All I want to do is just have my basic needs met. And when you, when you, if that's what you desire, then that's all you're going to get. So the point is this, you know, without, without risk taking the opportunity for growth beyond what has already been experienced is dramatically diminished. So risk offers new causes, which set into motion new effects. You have to take risk, guys, you know, and I'm preaching to the choir because all of you took a risk to start a business. But where I'm trying to push you guys, okay, where I'm trying to push you guys now is where are you stagnant at? And each and one of you are at different levels of that. Whether it's like, you know what, I've, if you've been here three months, six months, and you still haven't passed your flipping test, you're right, why are you stagnating? If you've been here, you know, a month, two months, and like, I haven't set an appointment because I'm scared to make a phone call. Why are you stagnating? If you have a license and you've been in the field, why haven't you, you closed your first sale yet? Right? If you believe in yourself, if you believe in what we're doing here, why have you not talked to other people about following you in business? Right? Because what, if you really, if you really know this to be true and you know that this is a good opportunity, why are you not playing at a higher level? Why are you getting in your own way? And the truth is, I think for most of you, right? And I, I know because I felt this way, it's because you hate that feeling of uncertainty and awkwardness. And so your mind, your, your programming takes you back to like, oh, let me just go back to comfort. And you, then you start applying the wish factor and you think by wishing it, hopefully the right things will happen in my life. This is why failure is necessary for success because once you hardwire your subconscious mind the right way, it knows you will continue to push its boundaries until you succeed. Failure is just part of the game, guys. You're going to fail. And I want to give you all absolute permission to fail fail and again i like it fail often fail early and fail forward right and if you're trying to delay it like well i think if i keep learning more if i keep if i keep just you know uh going to the trainings more and reading the books more then i'm not going to experience failure you're just delaying it i'd rather just fail you know suck now so that you can get better faster some of you are way like, well, let me wait six months so I can suck six months from now. <laughs> it's like, what? It makes no sense, right? Mm -hmm. So just get the suckiness out of the way so you can get better faster. All of us are going to suck no matter what, right? Dog will suck. Isaac suck. I always like to pick on Isaac because some of you have sat in his trainings and you're like, wow, I've seen this dude do some killer amazing presentations where he's produced amazing business but you guys were not there in february 2016 man right when i saw this dude do presentations and i was like oh my god this dude's gonna take work but what i loved about isaac is that right off the bat he realized i need to go do this on my own and he failed and he failed and he failed and he still fails just like all of us but he continued to do it until he made it better, right? Because repetition is the mother of all skill. So I'm really beating this down because you have to take risk, you know, and you got to do it daily. 
What is the one thing? And so write this down on a piece of paper. You know the answer to this. You know, I see some of you driving. Don't write it down. Right? But write this down on a piece of paper. What is the one risk you can take today that's going to take you to another level? Is there a phone call that you can make today that you know if you were able to set an appointment with this person, you know it's going to take your business to another level? Whether that's a business partner, whether that's a prospect, right? Is there something that you just like, you've been, you've been sitting on this for months probably. You're like, damn it, I just need to do this one thing for me to get to the next level. Then flip and do it already. Stop waiting and procrastinating. Get what you need to get done so, damn it, you can get to the next level of your life because tomorrow is promised to no one. Why are you waiting to succeed? I don't like really ask yourself that. And consciously, you know, you're like, I know, I know, but it's your programming. But only action is going to cure that fear, you know? And again, we're giving you absolute permission to fail. Okay. So that's number one, right? So that's so risk taking is really good for your life. It's it's very healthy to take risks, right? Because they helps you grow. Number two, this is a great one right here. I love this one. Is auto inquisition. Right? You see this picture is question. So what is auto inquisition? So one powerful way to influence, you know, your mind, your subconscious mind is asking it questions. And who talks to themselves here? Like, you know, you, whether you, you know, sometimes there's people that I know that they actually are, are talking verbally. I'm like, who are you talking to? Oh, I'm just talking to myself. Do any of you do that where you talk out loud to yourself? Right. You know, and some of, we do it all the time internally, but this is a powerful way. There is a skill set to, you know, to asking questions. Right. So I want to share that with you. So questions allow for the unknown variables already mentioned, right? As I mentioned, is when you ask yourself questions, it opens the mind to seek new answers. So your your subconscious mind is designed to help you get an answer or to solve a problem you are having difficulty with by giving you the fastest way to the solution. So I'm gonna give you some examples. And if it your mind is always going to follow the path of least resistance. And even though I consciously knew this, it, it, it's something that I have to consciously think about right now on the daily because it's not a habit. And I know I ask myself questions, but I do it unconsciously, meaning I don't know. But now I want to consciously, you know, start driving the vehicle of my mind and asking myself, you know, these questions. You know, so here's a, here's a great, here's a, here's a little great quote, right? So there is magic in asking yourself the right questions. And so what is that, right? So can you ignore a question? Can you ignore this one? You know, and it should be noted that your subconscious mind answered each of those questions before you consciously even created a response. That's the power of our mind. So the brain cannot ignore a question. It must process the question into an answer, even, even before it considers that the question is in fact the question. Isn't that interesting? This is something that we can use to our advantage, right? So let me repeat that. So the brain cannot ignore a question. It must process the question into an answer before it even considers that the question is in fact a question. Sounds like a riddle, right? But this is something that we can use to our advantage. So the trick is to format the question in a precise way in order to get the subcon you know, in order to get by the subconscious mind's walls. So here are examples. What else is possible that I have not considered? So when you're going through a challenge in your life, whatever it may be, personal, financial, and you just can't seem to figure it out, a great question to ask yourself and sitting sit there is like, what else is possible that I have not considered? It's a great thing to It's a great question because your subconscious mind now must find an answer to that. It's kind of like the saying, like I, I hear a lot of people, you know, I love San Diego. I love the weather here. And I meet a lot of people that are leaving California. Oh, it's just too expensive here and this and that. And so me, I started asking myself the question, well, 
I know it's expensive here. How can I live here? How can I make the money to live here? And that's what led me into business, guys. So it really, the quality of our life is based on the quality of the questions that we ask ourselves. Let me repeat that. The quality of our life is directly based on the quality of the questions that we ask ourselves. And this is programming, right? And you have to do that. If this is not a habit for you, um, the reason I am talking to your mind right now is to develop a new pattern to give you new results. Let me ask you a question. Do you ask yourself questions like that? What else, what else is possible that I have not considered? Here's another one. How cool is it that I have so much money? What am I going to do with all this extra cash? a great question your mind has to find an answer to that what do i need to get to get ahead in life have you asked yourself that have you ever sat in a room for 10 minutes and just asked yourself questions like this like what do i need to what do i need to get to get ahead in life and how do i make this a reality What if I were actually successful on my goals? What would that look like? These are phenomenal questions to really ask yourself. Your subconscious mind cannot disregard these questions. So it, it immediately processes and attempts to answer any questions it receives. And this is what constantly keeps me in the selling the dream to myself, you know, in one of my goals early on and i remember when i first wrote it down right away my my mind was like get out of here and this was a ridiculous goal at the time you know when i came into difference in 2011 and i went to fast start school again i remember on a yellow pad of paper i was writing down you know what i want and i said i want to make a hundred thousand dollars a month passively and i want to make that would be 1.2 million dollars a year of passive income and i remember right away i was like you know flipping away my mind was like but it, the truth is is that possible here and the answer is absolutely yes right the answer is absolutely yes you know um i was just talking to isaac and you know they have a a $500,000 him and Elvia have a $500,000 rollover in the pipe, right? This is one client, by the way. So this one client, you know, if and when this closes is going to bring $35,000 of commissions to the field, right? So in the one client's going to pay, you know, even after a split would pay someone like Isaac close to $20,000 in commissions, right? And that's just one client, guys. So Isaac and I were talking about, I was like, just imagine finding one client like that every day. Is it possible? And the answer is absolutely yes, it's possible. Especially now with the digital platform that we live on. There's a lot of clients out there that have over $500,000, you know, sit in 401ks and IRAs that just are looking for our help. Can you go make 100000 a month? The answer is absolutely yes. Right? But until you believe you can do that, you're never going to take action. So you, you, you may consciously come up with the answer, but your brain already came up with the answer and your subconscious is holding the response. This is why you have to sit and ask yourself questions now. And I'll get into further in the training here. I wanna make sure I'm staying on time, right? Is I wanna, I wanna challenge you guys to ask yourself questions, right? And spend time with yourself. We're so busy all the time from the moment we open our eyes to the moment we put them down, we're just nonstop, boom, 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 boom. And we think that being more busy is actually productive. Don't, do not mistake busyness for, for, production, for productivity. Actually, the most successful people, you know Warren Buffett, for example. Warren, you guys know, if you never heard of Warren Buffett, right? Warren Buffett is obviously one of the most famous investors. Warren Buffett reads over 500 pages a day. Warren Buffett does not even maintain a schedule. His schedule is open all the time. 
because Warren Buffett understands the most valuable thing that we all have is time. And he loves to spend a lot of time thinking. And that's the, there, there's something to be said about that. How many of you spend time thinking? How many of you actually take the time to put it in your schedule to say, no phone calls, no for this moment, whether you do it early in the morning, maybe you take a break during your work day and you take time to just think and contemplate your life. And for most people, they, they can't do that because their mind is just way too busy. You have too much stuff going on in the six inches between your ears for you to really take time out of your life to say, hold on, hold on, whoa, 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 why, why am I doing this? Right? And I start asking yourself these questions. What else is possible that I have not considered? Hope this is making sense, right? Um, this is a powerful story, right? Um, this is, I was introduced by all these guys to personal development. You know, we all know who Thomas Edison is. If you don't know who Thomas Edison is, um, it's because of him we're all enjoying this, you know, this technology because he opened the door to elect electricity, right? He created power. He created the phonograph. He created the way, he created radio. He created these things. And he was one of the greatest inventors of our time. He was born in Ohio in 1847. He died like in the 1930s, but he became one of the most prominent individuals in American history and in global history. And he was known for actually practicing this auto inquisition. So this is a powerful story. Let me share this with you, right? So he would practice auto inquisition by, he would sit in his favorite. So check this out. Let me just paint the picture for you, right? He would sit in his favorite chair by himself, right? He would hold metal balls in his hand and they would be you know so he would sit in a chair hold metal balls in his hand and under his hand there would be a, a metal bowl so during rest he would focus on a question on a problem that he was trying to solve he was trying to invent things that had never been invented right these are things that at that point in time people would think it was crazy to invent electricity think about it Imagine if electricity was never invented and someone talked about it, all of us would be like, that sounds ridiculous. That, is, that sounds almost virtually impossible. And if he dozed off, the metal balls would fall from his hand into the metal bowl, waking him up. So that way he would stay suspended between sleep and dreaming state. He purposely would stay within that state, which would give him access to his subconscious mind which would allow him to solve the challenges of his time with absolute accuracy. Now, when I read that, I was like, wow, now I've never done that. It gives, it gives me a mental lollipop. I'm like, wow, that's cool, but I've never done it. I'll be honest with you. But this is someone that he, he was the inventor of the power nap, Thomas Edison. He would always take time for himself to think in a room and he would do the metal balls because he didn't want to go into a deep sleep. He would just, he wanted to stay in that state so that he can tap into. He's like, I got to find these answers. And I was like, I've never done that. And so we're, we're still don't realize just how powerful our mind is. And this is from one of the greatest inventors of, of all time. We were talking about this last Saturday, right? I'm going to give a little science to you guys here. Um, because this is not a philosophy, guys, right? I'm not giving you guys some religious belief system here. This is actual science. You know, asking the right questions before drifting off to sleep helps, you know. So in Think and Grow Rich, he talks about make sure that you read your goals, your affirmations right before sleep and right when you wake up. This was something that was written in 1937. But why right before you go to sleep and right right before you wake up? It's because of your brain waves. And this is something I've, gone, I've come to learn that I think is phenomenal information if you can really understand it. So if you look at the slides here, you see how it says beta. Right now, all of you guys are in beta right now, right? Beta is you're alert, you're aware, you're, you know, some of you are driving and you're listening to my voice simultaneously, right? That's the, that's who you, you're awake, you're alert. Now, 
when you woke up this morning, you know, right when you wake up and the first thing you do is, you know, you, you're kind of still groggy as you're walking to the bathroom. That's what everyone kind of does, right? You wake up, you go straight to the bathroom and you're still kind of half asleep, half awake. Right. That's what we call, you know, theta. And so kids, right. So like my children between the ages of birth and seven, they're in a state called theta, which is they're just downloading their environment. They don't have a, you know, your children, they don't have a, an awareness until they're about age seven. They're not aware of their own thoughts. They just download what's around them. So we get like that right before we go to sleep and right before we wake up. And that's when you can really, really, when you, when you ask yourself the right questions, right? This is what you do right before you go to sleep. So right as you're falling asleep and you're laying in bed, that's when you want to ask yourself, what could I do to make my goals a reality? Right? You're getting beyond the conscious mind at this point and you're really impressing, right? The subconscious mind. And this is when we go into, you know, and this is why, how many of you have listened to a song right before you go to sleep and right when you wake up, the song is playing in your mind. You're like, oh, that song is in my head because it was impressing your subconscious mind. It's the same thing with your goals. It's the same thing with anything else. So if we know this, then why don't we plant the right things? So this is really powerful information if you can apply it, you know, and I don't want to sit here and just give you guys a mental lollipop. I'm hoping that at least one of you guys, please, at least one of you will actually do this. I mean, that would be a huge win, right? Because this is what I'm starting to do. You know, right now I'm talking to you with my ear pods. I've been going to sleep every night listening to these programs on my ear pods over abundance, right? So as I'm sleeping, because your subconscious mind is always awake, I'm fully asleep and in my ears I have things that are saying prosperity, abundance, you're gonna be successful, you're gonna make a lot of money. I'm listening to these things because I wanna reprogram my mind. I wanna take my life to a higher level, so I'm taking new actions. And because I know human nature is most people, you know, is, is I've heard trainings like this a lot and I never did them, so I know that maybe most of you won't do it. And I'm hoping that I'm saying that in a way that you said be, you're going to challenge that and say, I am going to do it. Matter of fact, I want to, I want you to comment right now. If you're like, I'm actually going to really start working on my mind and start asking myself the right questions and start developing new habits associated with my thinking so that I can get to another level in life. I know some of you, I don't, I'm not, I, I'm seeing the comment machine go off, but I'm not looking just for sake of time. Because if you're really serious about taking your life to another level, until you start changing your patterns and your habits and the way you think, nothing's going to change. Right? It's not. So I, I, I want to challenge that. Somebody just unmuted themselves. Please mute yourself. So number three, okay, let's get into this here, is expectation. Hold on real quick. I have someone... There we go. <clears throat> so the power of expectation is another way that subconsciously controls your life and it creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. So we all have expectations about our life and what you expect you're always going to get. This is why you get a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? It could be as simple as today. If you expect, you know, to eat today, it's a simple expectation, you know, none of you are concerned or worried that you're not going to be able to eat today. So you'll create a self-fulfilling prophecy, which is at some point today, you're going to eat. It's simple. I know it's very trivial, but it, it's the same thing with achieving goals. But let me share this with you guys. Listen to what I'm about to tell you. It really becomes taxed into your mind to stay in a state of positive expectation when you find yourself in a perceived negative life situation. And so this has been by far the greatest lesson that I've learned as an entrepreneur, as a human being, and how I see it play out even with other people. As a leader, this is the rubber that meets the road. This is what separates the men from the boys and the girls from the women. 
It's your emotional intelligence. It's how you process the negative aspects of your life. And this is where I see people struggle immensely because your recovery time takes a long time for you to get back to a state of positive expectation. So when a negative event happens, and we're all going to have them, they will never go away. But when a negative event happens in your life, we tend to tune out and isolate. And I know teammates that when, when stuff hits the fan negatively in their life, they will isolate for weeks. Weeks. I mean, I'm like, where did they go? What happened to so-and-so? They disappeared. And when they come back, they were like, oh, I'm sorry. I just had to take time away because I was in a negative situation. I was in a negative place. And I get it, guys. Life happens to all of us. So what I'm trying to tell you is that you have to work on your mindset to develop your state of expectation differently. It's hard to expect positive things when you're constantly perceiving negativity. Let me repeat that. It's hard to anticipate or expect positive things to happen to you when you're constantly in a state of negativity. Right? And so you have to, so what's my point is recover faster. you got to recover quicker, guys. Whatever is challenging you right now, whether it's financially, emotionally, mentally, physically, I know it's tough. I'm not telling, I'm not trying to downplay your situation, but what I'm trying to tell you is that staying in that state is not going to help your situation. It's only going to, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You're only going to create more negative negativity. So you have to recover. So well, that's, how do I do that? This is a mental game of chess. So this is, you know, what I'm about to tell you right now is really challenging, but I'm telling you that this is the way to go. You have to detach all of your expectations and do not label them as negative or positive. Just see them all as stepping stones to a more positive outcome. So let me explain that. That means that no matter what's going on in your life, right? whether it be negative or positive, right? And if you see something that's negative, don't identify with it, detach from it. Don't affirm it like, oh, I'm going through this. And matter of fact, let me call a friend, a family member to tell them about the drama that I'm going through right now because I need to share this with somebody. That just consistently reaffirms that negative state that you're in and you're only gonna get more of it. You have to just look at it and say, it is what it is. Can I, if I, you know, can I change it? And if the answer is no, then just accept it and say, you know what? I know that this is just a stepping stone to the life that I want. And recover faster. I know it's difficult, guys. This is by far the greatest challenge to your success. It is the greatest obstacle for you becoming the man or woman that you're always destined to be is because what you perceive as negative in your life and you think you're a victim of it is actually happening for you, not to you, to help you become the man or woman that you're supposed to be. So I want you to learn from it, detach from it, and just see as like, you know what, this is happening for me, and I'm just going to see this as a stepping stone for me to become the person that I'm meant to become. This is a powerful mental technique that I'm sharing with you right now that once I got this, it really changed my life because the way that I can handle situations and negative situations in my life now, I still deal with it, but my recovery time is faster. And you know, there's, there's things that I've gone through that had I gone through in the beginning, I probably would not be here. I would have quit, but I had to develop that muscle. And so here, another way of looking at that is also become aware of anything that brings you happiness, no matter how trivial it may be. You have to like tell yourself, what, what are you happy about right now? What are, you know, what are you grateful for right now? What's, what is working in your life right now? What do you appreciate in your life right now? And you have to take moments of your day to do that. And by doing so, you begin to slowly train your subconscious mind to find more aspects of your life that bring you more happiness, and which then it sets your expectation muscle into a more positive state. 
because when you focus on what is working, what you're telling your mind is mind, find me and bring me more things to my life that are working. I appreciate and they will do so. If you focus on what's not working and what's missing and what you don't have, what you don't realize that you're training your mind to do is to find more of that. You know, mind, find me more negative things that are missing, not working, and I don't have. And it creates a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so when you have negative expectation, don't be surprised on why you continuously experience more negative things. But if you have positive expectation, your mind also has to find that too. I hope this makes sense. You know, I'm not trying to go too deep here, but I want this to make sense because I want you to look, you know, I love being around positive people, you know, and, and there's people I, I, I love to observe their body language, observe their behavior in group settings. Um, people I spend a lot of time with actually, you know, Isaac being one of them, you know, I, I love hanging around Isaac because Isaac is someone that, always is saying something positive if you're around this dude he's always like bro i love my we can just be sitting there and we're working on a project and we're just having a cup of coffee and we're like knee deep into a project and all of a sudden he's like bro i love my life <laughs> i was like what i love my life man i'm so happy it just comes out of nowhere you know he says all these little isms all the time it's like bro i'm so blessed man like what what'd you say bro i'm just so blessed you know like he and I know he says he's just because this is the state that he's in and he constantly affirms the state to himself and to those around him because it, it raises the frequency, it raises the energy. You know, another person that's like that, if you get into a group situation, look at Dago's behavior. I study Dago, right? You know, when you're in a room with Dago, he, Dago's probably one of the people that I know works a room better than anybody I know, right? And Dago is high energy. So when you're around him, he automatically lifts your energy just by being in the room. And because his expectation is he wants to max out the environment and he wants to suck out as much of the environment positively as he can. And by doing so, you get sucked into that positive energy as well. It's harder to not be around. Dago. If you're around Doggo and he's quiet for more than a minute, I think there's something wrong with Doggo, right? But Dago will always be high energy and he's always has flipping music on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If I was, you know, anytime I've ever spent the night with him in a hotel room or, you know, at his house at six in the morning, his house sounds like a flipping disco club, right? Because he, I'm telling you, this guy wakes up and he's just high octane energy and he likes to create that state, that environment around him. So his expectation is if you're going to be around me, then you have to have a high energy too. You know, and, and, um, and I've, I've observed this through him throughout the years and just observing through people. So it goes to show how you can train this muscle of expectation and also create that environment around the people around you. Um, meditation. And this has been, you know, meditation has been a very controversial subject. Uh, this is number four, by the way, for, for people, because sometimes, you know, I grew up in a, in a very, uh, you know, very Christian household. And I know some of you are very faith-based. And I was taught that meditation is the work of the devil, right? And I need, to, I need you guys to open your mind a little bit to meditation because meditation is not chanting to some God or spirit, right? Meditation is the mind is a muscle, right? Just like if you go, if some of you go to the gym today and you're going to work your chest out, your chest is a muscle and you must put weights on it and give it resistance if you want your chest to grow. Same with your mind. Now, how do you exercise your mind? It's a muscle. And meditation is by far one of the great ways to do that. And so you see, meditation doesn't mean that you need to sit down with your palms up and start going home, right? Meditation is actually a very simple technique. And it's good for your mind, right? And meditation is actually a form of conscious sleeping. So none of you think that going to sleep to rest and recover is... Uh, 
is some sort of, some sort of uh, philosophy. It's just something that we need if we want to be optimal. So when you meditate, it's a form of conscious sleeping. You're still awake, but in a way you're shutting the mind off to external stimulation. And it allows to focus, right? Like Bob Proctor, you know what Bob Proctor, Bob Proctor does? Bob Proctor goes into his office and on a white piece of paper, he draws a little point with a pen and he, and he tapes it on his bookshelf 10 feet in front of his desk and he sets an alarm for 10 minutes and he just focuses on that point for 10 minutes. He doesn't shift anything. He's like, no, nothing. I just focus on that little dot that I wrote on a pen for 10 minutes. Well, why do, why do you do that, Bob? Because it allows me to increase my muscle of focus. And meditation is also another way of doing that. It's a form of conscious sleeping. So just as you sleep to gain energy to function, meditation allows you to increase your focus muscles and increase your focus on when, what you intend to accomplish. And it allows a person to tap into the power of the subconscious mind in order to achieve goals that have been, and this has all been well documented. You know, Ray Dalio, who just wrote that book, Principles, he's a billionaire hedge fund investor. He says that meditation is the, he, he's like, meditation is the single greatest reason for my success because it trains your mind, right? And a lot of us are scatterbrained. Your mind is like, blah, 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 blah. Like right now, like some of you, and I'm around some of you sometimes, man. And I wonder what's going on in your ears and your mind would just not shut up. It just pop, 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 chatter, 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 chatter. And this is why you're so worn out by your own thinking. And so what do you want your mind to think? Don't you want your mind to focus on accomplishing the goals that it, you have for your life instead of getting distracted? Let me ask you guys a question. How many of you had a very busy day where you're like, I was busy all day, but you got nothing done that you wanted to get done that day? But yet you were busy. You were so busy, but yet you got nothing done that you set out to achieve that day. Why? This is because your mind is all over the place. It's like a machine gun that you cannot control. And until you learn how to work this muscle, you're not going to focus it in a better way. And this is something that I'm starting to do. And I'm telling you, like, it's hard for me to sit in a room for 10 minutes because I always feel like I have to be doing something. And I want to challenge you guys this, right? And I want to challenge you to sit in a room for 10 minutes and leave your phone outside of the room. Which is very difficult even for younger people, but even for, for older people. But think about how addicted people are like to their phone. Like when they're sitting there and they're doing nothing right away, like I find myself doing this with social media. Like I can be sitting and waiting for an appointment and I'm like, I got five minutes and right away without even thinking I'm already going through the newsfeed on my phone through Instagram or social. And I'm like, what? Like, it's just an automatic program that goes right into autopilot. And so I want to challenge you for when he's like, can you sit in a room for 10 minutes? No stimulation, no phone, no TV, no talking and just spend time with yourself. And just sit there and observe your thoughts for 10 minutes. Don't identify with them. Just sit there and think. You'd be amazed at what you think about. And most people don't know what they think about. So that's, it's very simple. So just sit in a room for 10 minutes and just focus on your breathing. That's it. And this allows thoughts to simply come and go without any attachment to them. This is actually meditation. This is like, it's like doing push-ups for your mind. And now when you tell your mind, hey, we're going to get this done today, you're going to start accomplishing goals because you're able to focus without all of these distractive thoughts that you constantly have. We can go, I mean, we can do a whole hour on that, right? But last but not least is, is uh, one of my favorites is becoming a conscious receiver. And I've used the word conscious. And what does conscious mean? It's just becoming more aware. This is something that I, that I, that I, I found myself like, wow, actually something that I, I don't do that well. Are you a good receiver? Let me ask you that question. Most people are better givers than receivers since giving makes you know, the giver joy and it rewards the mind. But are you guys, are you a good receiver? Receiving is an art that takes practice and allowance and it requires intim intimacy. 
you have to be you know it's it's intimate so it's something that i would downplay a lot you know um someone that's really good at this in our team is michelle franklin in terms of a giver you know if you're around michelle she's really good at complimenting and sometimes she would compliment me and she'd be like come on you need to receive that you know because i'm really good at pushing people up and finding the golden people but when people come to me and say, Carlo, you're so good at this. I appreciate you so much for this. You know, I'm like, okay, cool. Thank you. Next. And it's, it was hard for me to like receive people's compliments. And it made me feel uncomfortable, honestly. And, and I was like, wow, you know, I'm not a good receiver. And let me ask you guys this. Are you a good receiver? When people give to you, do you receive it well? How do you receive compliments? So when people say to you, you know what, um, man, you look so great today. I'm so appreciative of you. You're just an amazing person. Thank you for being in my life. Do you take the time to really say, oh, you know what, thank you so much for that without deflecting it? Because you have to, in, in order for you to get what's coming to you in life, what you really want, you have to be a good receiver. You have to develop the muscle of receiving. All of us can be good givers because when we give it, actually, you know, people say, well, it's all about giving and receiving. Well, giving is important, but actually giving actually makes the giver feel good because it makes us feel like we're doing something for somebody else. But when someone gives to you, for in, order for their, in order for a giver to be a giver, there must be a receiver. And that was something difficult for me. Like, how many of you have gone to eat with a friend and you guys start fighting over who's going to pay the check? Like, I got it. No, I got it. No, I got it. No, I got it. Right? And what I'm trying to tell you is that when somebody offers you something, you have to take it. I'm not saying you have to as in like it's forced upon you, but you should. Because that's a sign of you being a good receiver. And that makes the giver feel good. But when someone compliments you, and this is the thing where it boils down to a program is many people, they feel they're not worthy. So taking it deeper is, man, we can teach you again, everything about this industry, products, right? Life insurance, annuities, these big money making products, these valuable strategies and solutions that we have for people. But if you do not feel worthy that you can receive what's coming to you, then you're never going to get it. And it stems even deeper than that because some of us don't even feel worthy of being loved sometimes. That's a deep seated program from something that we've dealt with in our past, even things that you dealt with since you were a child. And if you don't feel worthy, then you're never going to get what's coming to you in life because your self worth has to be intact. So, this may be foreign to your mind at first, but after a few repetitions, you will less and less. You will feel less and less uh, uneasy and more appreciative of the compliments and yourself, which creates a new boundary and gratitude is experienced and your mind will search for new, for more ways to give you that. So I, I guess what I'm trying to tell you guys here is, is just know that you're worthy. Just know that you, this, you're perfect as you are. You come fully equipped with everything that you need in this life. You don't need to be, do, or have anything else to 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 give you that you are you already have everything you need you already are perfect as you are but i need you guys to feel worthy of the success that's about to come to your life and this is something that took me years guys i've been doing this a long time a long time and why did it take me so long to get to a six figure income? And honestly, it was because of these things that I did not even know within myself that for some reason I didn't feel worthy of it. Consciously, I wouldn't tell you that, but unconsciously it was something that I was like, wow, you know, am I worth making the money that I am? And the answer is now absolutely unequivocally, yes, I absolutely deserve it. Do you feel that you deserve the income that you're trying to aspire to. And until you, until you feel deserving of that, until you feel worthy of it, you're not going to get it. You know, and this is something that can be taught. You know, it's like it, you have to, it has to be experienced. 
And the truth is, I might not have to probably repeat this to some of you a million times before you're like, oh my God, you know what, Carlo, that, you're, that made sense. Because there's just so much programs that we got to get out of there. But you're worthy of everything that you want in life. Everything that you want is readily available here. We have the greatest opportunity on the planet Earth right now. I'm so excited for where we're going right now as a company, the opportunities that we have, the money that we can make, the way that we're free, the way that we can control our time, the way that we can control our income, the fact that this is a very niche industry, the fact that there's not a lot of people that can do this, the fact that I can, you know, it's, it's, it's an amazing, amazing business. You know, the, I work for myself. I come and go as I please. I'm so grateful for the relationships that I built here. I'm so grateful for the person that I'm becoming through all this information. You know, and I want that for all of you as well, but you have to want it for yourself. So it's a lot of information. I know we went a little bit, you know, went deep there. I do want to hear from, um, I, I would like to hear from a few people. And I went over, wow, my apologies, right? Thanks, thanks for you guys uh, sticking on. But I would like to hear just even from your own perspective, your own thoughts on what you got from it and how even some of this content has, has how you have applied it in your life and how it's making a difference in your life. And I know for some of you that it has. And um, I'd like to hear from a, just a couple of you before I let you go here. Who wants to share? Can I share? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, I, I, I love that concept and, and I love the idea of how our body, we need to be thinking about something so much until our body does it automatically. Right. And we're making those calls, we're setting appointments, we're doing all this. So I love the idea of making our body do what we need to do for us to be successful without even thinking about it. If it's, uh, talking to people, meeting people. And that is just so, so awesome. And I enjoy these type of trainings so much because it's all about making sure that we succeed inevitably. You know, I want to make sure that I train my body and my mind to lead inevitably. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter if I have a bad day, if I'm whatever I'm going through. I want my body to take control for us to move forward and succeed. So consciously and to get to the point where we're doing this subconsciously so i yesterday was watching a video of this really really successful real agent and he was saying how you got to break down three hours in your day and one hour just to think about what you could do for your business the second hour is implementing it because if you're just thinking about it and think about it that doesn't make no type of sense so you got to think about it there on, you got to make sure you put an hour to implement and execute. And then from the third hour is to follow up with that strategy for business or that structure, whatever you did. Um, and then repeat. And he said, if you do that every day, you're going to get to wherever you want to get to. And uh, that's how I feel. And, and, and I'm excited for that. I'm excited to be able to strategize how to think and how to be effective and execute on this business. If it's talking to more people, meeting people, if it's through social media, if it's in person, whatever it is, but I am excited and motivated to go forward. And, and thank you so much for this training, man. I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate your comment and well said guys, you know, and well said. And, and, it goes to sum up that do you believe that your thinking, the way you think has something to do with your life and the way your life is working? And if the answer is yes, then you, you'll take these trainings to heart, man. So thank you for, thank you for that, Isaac. Um, who else? I see people walking around in the background over there. I'll go. Go ahead, Mr. May. Um, you know, for me, uh, when you said um, people often know a lot, but they don't often do what they know, that is yeah. definitely me. Man. Um, I've been working on my mind and, and reading and material for, you know, over two years. And um, I think this whole time I just kind of been testing the waters, you know what I mean? Putting my pinky toe in. And I just think it's time for me to just jump in, you know what I mean? So, yeah, great training, man. Thank you. Awesome, man. Awesome. 
that's what we're trying to do here, man. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And uh, who else? I see uh, Susana in there. Let me unmute her. Are you there, Susana? I see you're unmuted, but maybe I don't know if the, if your volume is down. You're unmuted, but we can't hear you. Anybody else here? I can't hear. We can't hear you. Something something's up with your volume. Let's see, while we're waiting for her, does anybody else want to go? Can you hear there me? There you there you go. Okay. Hi everyone. Good morning. I just want to thank you for giving this training. I um it invites me all the time to become a better person. Um it gives me a lot of knowledge and it just makes me feel that I can make it to where I want to go. Um, it just makes me think that in a positive way, it, uh, I've been listening to a lot of positive affirmations at night, like I heard you say, um, that helps our mind throughout the day. And mainly, mainly it just, uh, it makes me want to be part of it um, more, part of Difference Financial, because uh, it made me grow. It made mm. me see the person that I've been, but that I didn't want to let out because of my insecurities. And uh, when you say you allow yourself to fail, it helps me because, uh, because you grow out of it and you become stronger. Thank you so much for this training because it not only helps me in my in my future, but it helps me as in my in my person and uh, allows me to get rid of a lot of my insecurities and just become a stronger and knowing that I can that I can make it. So thank you very much for the training. Oh, you're welcome, Susanna. Well said, my friend. Thank you for being open. Right, good stuff. I love that. Okay. All right, guys. Okay, one more. Let's say let's get one more, and then we're done. Anybody else? Going once. Let's hear from. Let's see if she's listening. Let's let's hear from Natalie. You there, Natalie? Nope. Let's hear from. Hi, I'm here. I'm here. I'm there here. you go. Hi. Yes. Thank you for this training. Um, you know, this is something that we were talking about the other day with me and, um, uh, you know, the things that um, we did a talk in my church about stinking thinking, you know, <laughs> just to uh, to just exit all that, you know, um, you have the, the choice to think about your thoughts, you know. And that's something I've been practicing for years. And I thank God that I'm finally in the space, like you said, to make that happen. If I want to make a hundred grand in a month, I can do that here. At a nine to five, I would not be able to. So, you know, it's, it's really up to me. And, um, and, and yeah, I love that, that fire that, um, that this industry provides. I love it. Right. And I'm excited, you know, and uh, so Natalie's brand new, guys. She's been making a lot of stuff happen via Zoom. She's starting to take a lot of action. I'm so excited to have some new people in our team. She's up in the Hacienda Heights, right in the L.A. area. You know, so this uh, some great things happening, guys. So people making some moves. So thank you. Okay, guys, so um, it's 10 o'clock. I've kept you guys over. Thank you guys for for patiently waiting and uh, I appreciate your guys' quality time here. I'm, I'm hoping you got some good uh, value from this. And, you know, we're gonna keep this going, guys. Um, you know, to me, you can't just talk about this one time and give you the mental lollipop. It must be habitual. Like I, I do wanna drill it, drill it, and drill it. Just like we drill the system, we drill our product. 
the more that you get to know the six inches between your ears, the more you can influence it and make positive changes in your life. And I believe all of us can rewire our mind to get to where we want to be in life and create the life that we all aspire to live here. You know, and I want to be a part of that. You know, this is the blue ocean that we're creating. This is really what difference offers people. And um, I'm hoping that you guys are really willing to do the work. It's not simple, but it's going to help you get to where you want to be. Okay. The next hard time we have will be Monday night. We'll get back to a process, right? System, products. Um, we want to keep teaching you guys basically how the business works so you can go out there and get results. Um, we're really starting to make some headway on Zoom. I mean, we closed all the apps that I know that we wrote this week in the team have all been written online. That's a first, by the way. We wrote every single app that we wrote the last seven days, right? Which I think is about five, were all written on a Zoom call. Let that sink in for a second, right? That's called evolution, you know? And that's what we're moving to. And so I can't wait till we're doing uh, 50 to 100 apps in a week and we're doing them nationwide. That's what we're moving to, guys. So exciting times, a lot of great things to look forward to. Um, for those of you that are on the accountability call on Monday, you know who you are, right? Make sure that you have your accountability ready to go Monday at noon for the conference call. And then at 7 p.m. Monday evening, we will do our company-wide training, okay? Have a phenomenal weekend. I send you all love. Peace out. Bye-bye.